Hey, my name is Patrick and welcome to Create Post Repeat, a podcast where we talk about the content creation journey. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so excited because today I get to talk to one of my favorite creators. You may recognize him, Aaron Tuning. Aaron started out by creating short form, hilarious content on Vine, remember that? And now he runs his own golf company? We're gonna get into all of it. Thanks for being a part of the Create Post Repeat podcast. Let's get into it. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. We are so glad you're listening and watching, but I'm really excited to welcome my new best friend as of 30 seconds ago, uh, Aaron Schooning. How are you doing, man? Man, I am doing uh, wonderful. It's been a good week. I'm enjoying life. Nothing to really complain about at the moment. Okay, well, if there's nothing- How are you? How are you? (laughs) I'm crushing it. I know that. I am making unrelenting memories uh, day to day, um, feeling myself, uh, and just living life. It's, it's my best life now, as some would say. Yeah. Um, that's the vibe you're putting out. I got that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also exhausted. I have three children and an amazing wife who also works full time and I'm trying to do this content creation thing and it is going mediocre. It's going mediocre. I'm thrilled about it and I'm into it. Um, I'm really thankful Good. you're here, man. I'm I'm really thankful you're having a conversation uh, with us. You have been like over the years. I don't remember the first thing I watched from you or the first thing I saw from you, um, but you have been one of my favorite creators over the years. Not just for uh, comedy, you create some really high quality stuff. So I guess like one thing I would ask you is like, what are you working on or into? Like, what are you excited about right now? Since you've had kind of a career of, you know, Vine and TikTok and uh, like short form content, long form content. What's what's something you're really excited about that you're working on right now? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. It has been kind of a patchwork career of uh, just trying to figure out how to make funny content however I can uh, for brands, for myself. Um, always kind of looking for that that one idea that I could really get behind and try to really grow. And I think we found that. So St. Andre Golf, uh, wearing the merch right now, it's kind of embarrassing, didn't realize that. Um, yeah, we launched that late August and kind of put together a dream team of friends and, and some comedians uh, to do a golf sketch comedy brand. So that has been the most fun I've ever had professionally, for sure. Uh, we just had our first like all hands team hang Two nights ago, I cried. It was wonderful. Went to Top Golf. We had like sixteen people. It was it was a blast. Um, so yeah, that is really energizing right now. I'm excited about the future. We've got a great team, uh, and yeah, just really enjoying the hell out of it. Yeah, that's that's been incredible to watch because it kind of obviously I'm sure there's tons of work that went behind the scenes, but you kind of just like all of a sudden because you know I follow you on all the the platform things, and all of a sudden it just popped out, and and you're you're in on your own joke where you're going, yeah, I'm doing a golf thing now. Who would have thought? And it's actually been pretty successful. You have had some uh, pretty. I don't know, like kind of like, uh, let's just call them like big time relationships. Like you, you recently did something with, uh, I, I know, um, I'm going to totally mispronounce his name. One of the relief pitchers uh, of the Braves has been doing content with you. You've obviously got some, uh, comedians on there that people recognize and are hilarious. And then Tiger Woods question mark. Yeah, that was wild. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's that happened in December was the shoot. Uh, we launched yeah last week of August. We got that email in November. So just a couple months after we launched, I thought it was a scam because it was from the production company. (laughs) They're like, do you want to shoot a tiger? And we're like, this isn't real. We got on a call and it was very real. Um, And yeah, we are now in, we're partners with Bridgestone Golf, which I've played Bridgestone irons and balls for years and years. So it's very authentic. Uh, Love them. They're based in Atlanta, which I did not know until we started talking. Yeah, they had us down to Florida. We shot with their whole roster of golfers, including Tiger Woods which was surreal. So shot a couple of videos with him. He was the man between takes. He'd come just like stand next to his chat. We're all laughing, hanging out, just being pals. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's been wild. We've had some really cool people be involved. Um, Colin McHugh, uh, Braves Colin. pitcher, my, my best friend for, he came up through the Mets. He made his debut at the Mets he was on the Mets for a couple of years. Um, we'll get into that. Yeah, he's, he's part of St. <laughs> Andre too. He's, he's one of our partners there. So, yeah, we've had some super cool people being some content and 
hopefully some some cool ones here shortly too. So okay, um, you've already brought us into a heated topic for me: baseball. Mm-hmm. I I grew up playing football, obviously. Of course. Um, and you uh, played you know, the football. They just threw you around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh. <laughs> Uh, I get uh, I get married. I moved to New York City. My wife and her family have been baseball fans their entire lives. I always thought it was an incredibly boring. In 2015, we moved to Queens. We've been here for about the last eight or nine years. And, and this is all going somewhere. She says, honey, we live in Queens, uh, as you know, and we are now baseball fans. It's a few subway stops uh, to City Field. We're going to go to some games. You're going to fall. In- I, 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 we are now a watching baseball family. And I went, this is terrible. Three games in, I'm like addicted. I I fall yeah. in love with baseball. It's one of the best games ever played. What year was that? 2015. Mets go to the World Series. And I'm like, oh, this is how it is. The Mets yeah. always go to the World Series. We're like, you know, Jordan era Bulls. The next year was the most disappointing year of my life. The year after that was more disappointing when, when it comes to baseball. And I'm just like, this is a really tough game. And I guess the main question I want to ask you is... The experience I've had with baseball is not only have I been surprised at how much I've fallen in love with, like, I know the stats, I know the lineups, I know the players. Not not only have I fallen in love with this team, it's shown me how quickly I can begin to hate other people based on how they dominate us. Is this a is this a trend of just for me or others as well? No, that's that's universal. That's sports, okay. right? It's these people you don't know, but they did a bad thing to your favorite players yeah. and you'll hate them forever. But then also because it's a sport, like who do you hate the most right now? Is it Acuna? Who do you hate? Like who, who's your number one I, hit list? My answer is longer than one name because here's what I have to say. I hate that I cannot hate Freddie Freeman. You cool. cannot hate him. You can't hate yeah. him. Kindest person in the world. We we don't, we the Mets, I'm on the team. We don't have the capability of getting him out. We are incapable of doing that. That, that is know, true, yes. People on other teams are able to get him out. He comes and then they come play for the Mets, unable to do it. There's something in the air. So Freddie Freeman is my answer. Don't hate him. Hate that I can't hate him. Gotcha. Okay. So even if they're even if you did hate him, it's someone in sports you hate, but then if he gets traded to the Mets, automatically love him. Automatically love him. You know what I mean? It is just such a a weird out of loyalty thing, but you don't really hate him. You just hate what he does to your team currently. Like Bryce Harper. That's my number one. Because Nationals, Phillies, stayed in the division, rakes, he's so good. Also a a tool, you know, we can say it. Uh, I think he's gotten better. He's gotten better over the years. He's one of those. I completely agree. He was on the fast track since he was 14. Like, you know, I, I have some empathy for him, like a Justin Bieber, where you're like, you were kind of screwed from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and he's adjusted pretty well. But same thing. When he was a free agent, um, you know, I was like, if I hate him, if he comes to the Braves, I'll love him so much. You're like, you're like, I hate him. But what if I did Photoshop like his name on the back of one of our jerseys just to see what it would look like? Just to for see what it would look like. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a friend who grew up playing out in Long Island and he made it to the minors. And then just it just it, it, he could it could never happen for him. Uh, but he knew Bryce Harper, actually, when he was growing up in those travel teams. And he was like he's like, that kid has always been that way. And it's just because he's been a legend since, like you said, 13 or 14. He's like, you can't get mad at the guy because he's just been Mm -hmm. a legend forever. And people have been kissing his feet wherever he goes. So Mm -hmm. uh, it brings me to the fact that the way I, uh, the way I snuck into your DMS was via Mets versus Braves, bro. Uh, I I've been love talking, you know, silly trash to you for the longest time ever. And I've hated how, the Mets last last year, we could not lose unless we played, played the Braves. And it was that sure. constant yeah. contention uh, uh, between uh, Mets, Braves, Mets, Braves, and then all of a sudden Braves, boom. And you've had a relationship with the Braves. I know you've talked about it a ton. You've had like a, a working relationship with the Braves for quite a few years, right? Yeah. Yeah, they rule. Uh, was there the stadium last night for an event? They're awesome. Um, that started – eight or nine years ago. I mean, I've been a, wow. unlike you, like I, I'm, I grew up on it big time where like, I remember loving my parents and then Braves baseball. It was always on TV, <laughs> TBS. Like it was really like, there's pictures of me. Every picture of me as a kid, I'm wearing a Braves hat or shirt. That yeah. was just my favorite thing. Um, 
so yeah, out of went to film school, always to make it. I just I went so I could make funny videos, and then yeah, started working professionally in Atlanta. I was like, I just want to make funny videos about the Braves. I couldn't call them up and say, "Pay me to make funny videos." They're like, "Who yeah. are you?" You know. Um, so yeah, we made a rap video about them. Um, very Lonely Island, over the top, ridiculous. We posted it two days before opening day, um, and two hours after we posted it, got a call from the director of entertainment for the Braves saying they wanted to play it in the stadium and kind of used it as kind of an anthem for that year, which was wild and surreal as a fan. Uh, and that's kind of kicked it off. Done a bunch of video projects over the years. Uh, and now it's wild that, you know, one of my best friends that I went to high school with is now a Brave. So it's just all very intertwined. Um, and even before Colin became a Brave, yeah, did one video the year we won the World Series, and uh, that did well. Apparently, they were playing it in the clubhouse before World Series games. Nuts. <laughs> and uh, we won. And, yeah, Greg Mize is the director of marketing at the Braves, invited me on the World Series bus, which that is That was just, fun. It was insane. Um, also, just seeing my city that I love a ton, yeah. like, that happy. Uh, you know, it was like a year before we're downtown – you know, there's Black Lives Matter protest. It is a yeah. very different vibe. Fast forward a year, the city is just like full joy. It was it was awesome. It was just the best day ever. So yeah, love the Braves. Uh, love a lot of the people there. I think they're a great franchise. Like how they run things. I think the Mets are too. To be honest, I think they like their front office rules. I think uh, they are now. I think they are now. I'm I'm loving Steve Cohen and and all that. But uh, yeah, yeah, Steve Cohen. I think like they do media well too. So that's kind of. Yeah the space you know I, I connect with teams and whatnot so yeah, yeah love the braves forever and now it's like a personal connection not just like sports connection i'm just <laughs> i'm in it it's way too deep so we <laughs> yeah. so i i live um in a neighborhood called uh long island city not long island it's called long island city um the view outside of my apartment is we're one stop from grand central it's literally like what you see in like a movie of like the horizon of new york and then it cuts to kevin McAllister, home alone too that's the view mm -hmm. outside of my kids' windows. And we, we, we forget that every once in a while, but it's just really cool. And since we're in Queens and we live in this you know, pretty affluent area, um, what area in New York isn't, right? But like uh, we live in this uh, uh, on Center Boulevard and there's actually apartments that provide short-term leases for tons of Mets players in my neighborhood. So it's not oh, uncommon. Cool. It's not, yeah, it's not uncommon like a couple years ago uh, to be out at the park and see like Jake DeGrom playing with his kids or, you know, Nimmo walking around. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. And um, I can barely hang in those situations. My 15 year old who is in love with baseball, every sport, actually, he, they, we have strict rules with him where we're like, you're not allowed to run up to a player that you recognize unless you check with us first. And we've had some pretty fun stories where we've been like, okay, go say hi. And he's like, hello, it's me, Declan. Um, and, and like, ta and we'll like, he'll talk stats with them. He'll talk, you know, uh, at yeah, who does he talk to? Who, who are the ones? Let's some, name some names. Actually, this is kind of a deep pull, but a few years ago we had a closer, uh, Addison Reed, um, mm -hmm. he bounced around. I, I don't know if he's still playing anymore. Um, but, uh, Declan saw him in the neighborhood, ran up to him and literally first and last hello addison reed i am declan uh it's so nice to meet you um i, I loved in you know uh yesterday's game and, and he's like cool yeah thanks man and then we go to the game we, we just so happened to go to the game that night we get tickets we're like two rows behind the dugout and he's yelling addison it's me declan from the park and finally addison walking off the field looks up and goes oh hey what's up and it was just like this little moment in his little heart that he'll probably never forget um of course so, he's a fan forever now yeah a lot of cool stories like that um so you grew up in atlanta and mm -hmm. um i did want to ask you like when it comes to like the whole content creation journey i would assume and forgive me for assuming did you kind of come from a bit of like a conservative christian background oh massively yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i was so you have you have atlanta right and then yeah. right outside of land you have georgia which is different <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm from like 45 minutes east of Atlanta, um, place called Stone Mountain. Do you know about Stone Mountain? Okay, Stone Mountain. Oof. Uh, I'm trying to not. <laughs> Stone There's Mountain. A lot of people oof. I love over that direction. Yeah, it is the biggest piece of exposed granite in the world. It's just a giant granite mountain. Uh, a giant carving of three Confederate generals on the side of it. Uh, it's the home of the KKK. Um, oh. Jeez. Yeah, and so that was like that's where I grew up, which is wild. I mean, that's also like where Donald Glover's from. It's a it's a majority <laughs> black neighborhood now. The, the uh, things that you're pull, the things that you're pulling out here, just the the facts are just it's wild. wild. Everyone I mean, it's, blows it's, my mind. 
look up Stone Mountain. It's people like, you know, you'll see once a year, someone's like, hey, we need to take down this statue. And yeah, I'm like, of course. You, you see this mountain, dude? <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's, there's always a, a petition to get a uh, cast carving to replace it. It's very funny. There's just an Atlanta yeah. joke that, that's recircled. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, grew up Southern Baptist, uh, went to public high school, and then Christian high school last three years. Um, but yeah, that that's, and I'm, I'm neither now. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, uh, agnostic progressive now. Maybe that's part of it. <laughs> like, I was raised being like, all right, I need some time to go over here and then we'll figure out where we land eventually. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the origin story. Well, this whole, this whole episode is so that I can, uh, witness uh, to you, I've mm-hmm. got some tracks. I'm gonna uh, text them over to you really quickly. If you could just, re- if you could just like, if you could just like, you know, rifle through those pamphlets real quick and just uh, tell me some. Of yeah, your yeah, I'm sure I've seen them because I gave them out back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, me too. Um, well, what was that like? So, because uh, you went to, I know you went to Full Sail University. Mm-hmm. And um, now, tell me if I'm correct here. Uh, well, I know uh, this is you know my experience with Full Sail. I, I grew up in Florida, Full Sail, and. Um, I was friends with all the guys that were in the audio department and the, the running joke gag or even just like hard truth amongst them was, dude, the audio department at Full Sail is kind of a joke, but the film stuff is legit. Would you say the same thing about your alma mater? Um, I don't know about the joke side. Uh, part of the deal with Full Sail is I mean, it's definitely a great film program, but it's it's a new class starts every month and you, yeah. you do the program. So you don't pick your classes. Um, so I've had so many people say, Oh, I have a friend that went there unless yeah. they were a film major that started the same month, of the same year. I didn't know him. it's wild. Right. So like never really enter. There, there's maybe one or two classes with audio that you overlap like at the very beginning where it's like intro math, which math at film school, not good, bad. Uh, yeah, but I, I've always heard it's film first. I know touring is a big thing. So like roadies, right. you know, lights, rigging, audio on the road. And then, yeah, audio engineering in studio stuff is, is I guess, the third one. That's how it was in my head. I don't know if that's the same now. Um, but yeah, pretty good, pretty good film program. It's top 10, I think. Yeah, and now you're using all of that. I would assume you're using all of that for, um, you know, the, the projects you're passionate about. But somewhere in between there, you start picking up your phone and doing the Vine thing. You're doing the TikTok thing. You're doing the Instagram thing. This short form content. And I've heard you say in interviews before, because I do my homework, that like you always come back to those more professional. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I heard this wrong. You always tend to come back to those more of those professional shoots, high end production. But you always have this off to the side, this content creation side of you where you're doing sketches, bits, um, and shorts. Um, would you say that's true? And how do you balance the two? Does it just happen randomly? Uh, is it something that where you get inspired and you pick up your phone and your film? Like, what's that story been like for you? Yeah, I, I do think that's true. And I think that's a reason why St. Andre is so special to me because the first time I've been able to kind of marry those two things where it is yeah. like dumb, oh. small jokes, little sketches, and I can marry it with like high production and do it the way I've always kind of wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, the how I kind of say it from the beginning, I guess the real like professional origin story is Lonely Island joined SNL when I was 15. Yeah. Uh, I love them on YouTube. I love Bo Burnham on YouTube. Those are my guys. Um, and it just blew my mind because I grew up watching SNL. We'd watch the tapes, like best of Chevy Chase, like all that stuff. My dad loved it. Uh, so once... I saw these YouTubers that were outrageous joined SNL. It blew my mind. I remember that like light bulb moment being like, that's an option, you know, like that's a viable path. And I kind of decided that's what I wanted to do. Went to film school so I can make funny videos. Like a lot of kids at full, full sale saw, you know, Pulp Fiction. And they're like, I want to do that. Like they want to be doing these big movies and got inspired by something where I was like, I just want to make like dumb online videos. Yeah. Uh, That was always kind of the goal. So yeah, I spent, I spent my career just doing that where I could like the, the film stuff would pay the bills. Uh, I started off kind of boring type uh, book trailers and talking head corporate stuff. And, you know, like I said, with the brave thing, I, could, I couldn't just get those comedic video jobs in the beginning. I had to like prove it. Um, so that's where vine came into it. That's like, I didn't need a crew and a client. I could just all of a sudden have my phone and tell jokes there, you know? So yeah, it was kind of both things that were separated and 
as I got better at Vine stuff, picked up steam there, kind of, I guess, started to have a platform. That's when brands would be like, oh, we could, you could do this professionally a little bit. So yeah. it was just kind of marrying those two up until now. I'm, I'm figuring this out as I'm talking about it. I haven't like talked this out. So I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense that it, it was separate and it's just gotten more and more intertwined where I was doing that professionally, like four brands comedic content, but it wasn't my baby. You know, it was just like a project. You make a video, you hand it off to them, they do whatever they want with it. They distribute yeah. it and then you move on to the next project. Um, and now it's, it's kind of marrying both the way we want to do it. Yeah. And, you know, so now you have your own company and you're kind of doing things on your own where you can like you you kind of have like some com creative control and, you know, who contributes. And obviously, if a Tiger Woods calls, you're like, yeah, but you can make some other choices about ah, that's not who we want to be about early stages. When you began making money uh, from content creation, did you did you still have high standards or was it like, a, man, I, I'm you know, I'm saying yes way more because I'm actually able to like pay a like a phone bill or two. Yeah, I was definitely saying yes a lot more. Um, and also, it just makes you feel old, but like Vine, that, it was pretty revolutionary to where yeah, people in their home were becoming comedians. You know, like yeah. it wasn't the traditional stand-up route. It's these random people, you know, in like a small town in Kansas. Now they're your favorite funny person because they're just putting themselves out there. Um, so it, it was just a new frontier, like like brand deals. I remember when that was frowned upon you do an ad and everyone in your comments is like sell out Ugh, i'm unfollowing now it's so expected and celebrated yeah. really it's like oh that's yeah. a great ad like oh it's a cool partnership it's just that's how it works um so yeah at the beginning on, i did one ad on vine because i was scared of that <laughs> i was like i don't want people to be mad at yeah. me uh it was for the pope Uh, I'm not kidding. I got an email from some agency with like at Vatican dot whatever, uh, like email address is copied. The Pope was coming to the United States and they had an emoji keyboard <sighs> and I did a vine ad for the Pope cause I thought it was so insane. I was like, if anyone's <sighs> mad at me for doing a Pope emoji ad, um, <laughs> so that just started it. I've just kind of, you know, ridden the wave and watched as kind of the creator culture is shaken out. But, uh, yeah, I've definitely done. Yeah, early on, especially funny stuff, because I, I was fine doing video stuff. I, I had those projects, but if anyone, if a local like roofing company was like, we want to do something funny, I'd be like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of, I, I also knew that I needed to get better at it too. Like just having a, a oh. funny joke does not translate to like a good video that performs well for a business. So a lot of times the, I, I love having these conversations just simply to have the conversation, but mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of the stuff I do on, you know, uh, YouTube and, and with shorts and with reels and things is like I'm someone who's trying to grow and become a better content creator. So, at what, you know, you, you're realizing I want to get better at this. Can you like can you dig just like one level deeper and say, like, I need to get better at and I did it by doing and, and I grew by doing this. Like, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, because uh, comedy and comedy marketing is very different. You know, it's like making people mm -hmm. laugh. Uh, you can go to a stand-up show, watch that. You got funny friends. You're funny. Like there's different ways to be funny. Um, but actually selling something, representing a brand. I mean, it goes back to, you know, Donald Miller story brand type stuff where it's, ah. if you confuse, if you confuse, you lose. It's, uh, my friend BT Harmon, he's a brilliant podcaster and marketing genius. We talked about the, uh, epitomizing statement where that's what I'm trying to do with like St. Andre. It's golf sketch comedy. You can understand that, you know, you know what that yes. is. Um, neat dude or not neat dude, uh, dude. Perfect. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, fun I'm dude. Gonna start fun neat, I'm going to start dude. Uh, neat dude. Well, neat dude is a clothing brand that my friend Chris okay, runs. <laughs> it's, it's in my head. Uh, but yeah, it's just like a understandable story. That's a big part of it is like learning audiences, uh, not confusing them. Like how can we make your life better? How can you make the customer, the hero, not the product? Um, all while having the comedy as part of it. I, it's, it's, it's a skill, you know, that you just got to yeah. learn about. Um, cause yeah, funny videos, they might do well on TikTok, might do well on Vine with no brand, but once you attach a brand, it's a different animal. That's a really, wow. Like, you know, that, you know, you just made the reel right there, you know, uh, put some soft music behind that. You know, once you involve a brand, mm. it's a different animal. That's great. Hashtag animal. Uh, hashtag PETA. That's good stuff. Add a tiger roar to mix in tiger, you know? Yes. Wow. See, we're doing it. This is the process. Mm. This is the process right mm -hmm. here. 
you've said you you mentioned stand up comedy and you've said in the past that like you know it used to be that stand up comedy uh, old school um, guys and gals would would frown upon kind of what you started out doing but now you have like one of my favorites is uh, and I hope I'm saying this right uh, Matt Reif he's just um, uh, are you familiar with him yeah yeah he's the hot yeah. dude right yeah <laughs> classically hot. Like us, yeah, yeah. running the same circles, same. Of course, and 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 he, you know, he's one of those guys who really took to um, all the vertical video uh, uh, platforms. Obviously, a little later, not a Vine guy, young dude, and guys like that. Uh, guys, they're they're they're. It, it is the track now. Uh, and do you, do you mm -hmm. think that's, do you think that's shifted in the comedy world? Cause I know you do, you don't do just the short form content. You don't do just long, you do stand up as well. So you're kind of in all those worlds and hearing all those conversations. Do you think it's shifted to where that is more acceptable now, or even expected now to do, uh, to, to be on social platforms promoting yourself? Yeah, a hundred percent. It is completely shifted, uh, much like the, the creators doing ad conversation, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was glorified back in the day where you just grind during smoky bars seven nights a week doing stand up shows. There's going to be a HBO exec in the back of the room that's like you yeah. get a special and like that's how you make it, you know. Which I think to a degree was true back in the day. Um, you just get noticed at like the comedy cellar, and that's how your stand up career goes. Um, and it, it was I remember back in the day starting to get into stand up, and I'd have a ho I would die inside when a host would be like, "You might have seen this guy on Vine." You know, and I could like hear groans like from comics being like, I've been out here grinding. This dude's just in his home. I kind of get that too, but it was a little frowned upon. Definitely. Like you didn't, you didn't go through the real grind because stand up is so much harder than anything else. I think <laughs> than things you can edit, things you can use music for like, it is the rawest form of comedy. You know, it's, you get immediate feedback. People are going to like it or not like it. You're going to know how they feel immediately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it has shifted. And if, if people haven't kind of acknowledged that or grown with it, then like they got left behind because like you said, like, like a Matt Reif, uh, I just saw Stavros Halkias, yes. uh, Greek dude who he posts so his funny. crowd work clips all the time and it, it's yes. blown him up and also podcast. I know that was another one of those things that like older comics are just kind of old school comics didn't get for a while. It's just another way to be funny. It's another way for people to find you stay in touch. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's all about being funny where you can and your people will find you. Um, and it's either kind of adapt to that or die. Speaking of left behind great book series. Yes. Tim LaHaye, Jerry B. Jenkins. Gosh, we <laughs> pretty good. I would like, uh, I would like to see Donald Miller analyze that whole series. I think that would be great. Uh, yeah. talk, you know, you, you confuse, you lose page one. Everybody's out. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, Name drop time. Uh, you know, a buddy of mine was in Paramore for a while and mm -hmm. I remember and they, man, they're amazing. Um, they actually asked me to come on tour with them and maybe be one of their guitar players. I'm just saying. OK, uh, but uh, <laughs> is that real? Yes. Oh, I didn't know you rip. You shred. I shred because he bled. I jam with the lamb. I rock with the Dang. flock. Dang. I do all the stuff. No, it, it, um, the, 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 at that point, these guys were like 17. I mean, they were so young. Oh, God, um, I got And I, I got to see them play. My buddy played with them when they played CBGB before it closed. Small crowd. Now they're in like arenas. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they came to New York, and of course, they had to go talk to all their label people, go into all these offices with big wigs. And my buddy came back to me and he said, this was so insane because every office – every office they we walked into, the first question was not about album, mixes – uh, merch, the first question was always, how many MySpace followers do you have? How many MySpace followers do you have? Mm -hmm. And it, in my brain, it was kind of like this thing where like the tide was shifting to these like online platforms really boosting people. It's crazy. So um, yeah. to, to hear your perspective from a comedy standpoint is just it's just incredible. Do you do you have, I, so I know like, you know, what you're doing with St. Uh, uh, Andres, am I saying that right? Andre. Ah, St. Andre. Named after Andre 3000, Outcast, <laughs> Atlanta, no Braves. You get it. That's phenomenal. Um, yeah. That is your favorite. That's what you're doing. That's what you're focusing on a ton of time. But do you still enjoy dipping into short form content? Do you still enjoy doing stand up? Do you even have the time for those things? You know, stand up, uh, I don't do much anymore. Um, I was 
in the most consistent groove I've ever been in doing stand up when COVID happened. And it yeah. kind of obviously made me stop and step back yeah. and realize like I'm I'm kind of just burning energy here. Like I wasn't gonna do the six nights a week in a bar to you kind of need to do that to get great at stand up. Yeah. Um and I, I've never loved it like that. Like I want to be doing other things. I want to see my friends. I wasn't just gonna sell out every night and and go hard on it. So that made me pull back. I'll do a show a month maybe here now. Um just like a booked out show. Andrew Stanley is a great friend of mine, comedian that we did a podcast together. He has a couple great shows, so I might hop on one of those here and there, but it's not a priority. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been posting on my own socials. I'm kind of just all in on St. Andre. It's been so much more fulfilling, really. Um, so yeah, just head down doing that for now, and I feel great about it. Do you think you might ever pop back in, in into that uh, into those other platforms? <sighs> Potentially, uh, I'm also busier than I've ever been. Yeah, uh, in a good way. Yeah. But it, if I'm posting a lot elsewhere, that's usually because actual work is slow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or like I'm not fulfilled by other work. Like yeah. if I was kind of toiling away on these big projects that I didn't, I didn't feel like my my jokes, my ideas were getting in there. I feel like I needed that outlet somewhere else. Um, but I think all the boxes are checked with St. Andre. So, I mean, potentially, but not soon, I don't think. Yeah. Well, you kind of answered, you know, you kind of answered my, uh, one of the questions I had, you know, of like, I talked to a lot of creators and by a lot, I mean like two that said yes, that, um, you know, do dance between like really successful content creation and a full-time job, whether they're like a pastor at a church or whether they're, you know, out, you know, at a lawn care company, I don't know, whatever. And kind of like that, that conversation that people like me who are trying to grow on platforms is like, how do you balance the two? And it's, I, you know, everyone tries to give this really creative answer and you kind of gave the most honest answer, which is like, dude, like when I want to, and when I can, and I find, I find myself, um, in a position where like, yeah, I have a full-time job. I'm a worship pastor at a church crushing it, you know, again, rocking with the flock. You know, my wife yeah. has, is, is a full-time assistant principal. You know, we're doing okay. We're paying our bills in New York City. How privileged are we, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But there is this like passion inside of me uh, uh, to create. And uh, that kind of came up because, you know, you growing up in Southern Baptist land, I was raised in Orlando, Florida at like, uh, we called our church Fort God. It was like this huge campus. You've seen them all that like, you what know, was it? The, I might... uh, First Baptist Orlando. Um, oh, I've been to FBC. Yeah, baby. FBC Orlando. Yeah, that's it. FBCO. What did you do there? Huge. Uh, I just went to the Christmas, outrageous Christmas stuff they oh, would do uh, like once a uh, year. The, the singing Christmas trees. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Um, to fuel. Just obscene. What a show. Yeah. <laughs> obscene. What a show. FBCO. They're singing Christmas trees. Put that on the card. Um, <laughs> Aaron tuning. Um, the the way those trees are. Oh, this is gonna make you so mad. The way those trees, the the greenery is put on them is in my oh, no. Bible class in high school, we'd take a break on learning about scripture and we, the students, would climb those trees and put in the fluff ourselves. And just the other day, I'm so glad you mentioned this because just the other day I was thinking, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's safe. There's actually specific laws about child labor and it's, it's pretty frowned upon, even in Florida. <laughs> Even in Florida, this was the nineties, bro. Like, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. so like, um, it built character, but I find back to like, I I'm, I'm finding, you know, I'm, 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 uh, in these spaces where, um, at my church, you know, I guys that like have any type of, you know, people that have any type of skill in audio or video, or they become like the content creation people. Um, and I know that there's like, oh, there's like some trauma attached to that. Like, oh, they were always asking me to do things. And I'm sure some of that happened to you as well but they're inside of me um there can't this grew this desire to kind of do it on my own like i i love what i get to do but like man i kind of want to create some stuff on my own so hearing your story of like having successful work here but then hey if i want to i find the time to do it over here and maybe it's successful or not it's actually it's actually encouraging it's honest and i really appreciate it man dude of course. I, you know, it's different for everybody. Like if, if you get that fulfillment in work, uh, if you're a creative person and hopefully you have a job that does that, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that a lot of people have that opportunity. Um, 
I know yeah. people are working towards it, but like, yeah, you got to find a way to be fulfilled in that way or else you'll uh, go to jail, do something terrible, you know? <laughs> That's a, that's a hard turn. That's a hard turn. Or else, hey, you know, find fulfillment or else you will go to prison. It's going to right, happen. That's what I do. Yeah. Anybody that does like a murder suicide, I'm like, do you ever just like make TikToks? Like maybe, you know, <laughs> this could be the solution or maybe not. Yeah. Um, rapid fire before we get out of here. Yeah. Um, is that OK with you? Absolutely. The Applebee's saga blocked by Applebee's. Then then you blocked Applebee's. What is the mm -hmm. deal? Where are we at? How are you in that process? Well, yeah, I used to give Applebee's a lot of shit for not being Chili's and they didn't like it and they blocked me. And then like five years later, they unblocked me. Pepsi blocked me too because they're in bed with Applebee's. They're, it's a bad curse couple. But Applebee's yeah, unblocked me and tweeted, said like, does someone need a hug? Out of nowhere, after years. And I just blocked them back. So don't you dare. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Applebee's sucks. Do not, if you listen to this, don't go. Don't go. Uh, th th so this, uh, I have two podcasts. This one is technically called create post repeat CPR. Not a big deal. Nice. Um, and not sponsored by Applebee's. I think we should say that or Pepsi. Yeah. That's all please put that in the, in the show notes for this one. Not <laughs> okay. sponsored. Not Fridays, apps. Ruby Tuesdays down for whatever. I will eat anything. Just I worked at Ruby. I worked at Ruby Tuesdays. Great salad bar. Did you? The Whoa. Ruby, Tuesday, the Ruby? No, I did. I don't currently. I did work on Ruby know. Tuesdays, <laughs> and um, I went to one uh, last week in North Carolina. We had the best time. A truly, the, there's eight the, of us that went. <laughs> two for ones all day, every day, bro. Um, Whoa. We. It was stated by my manager at Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, they want to close this branch down but it actually costs less mo money just to keep it open so we all still have jobs that was the environment i was working in thanks ruby tuesdays business uh, 101 i love it also also got the company sued i personally got the company sued for racism unintentionally can i tell you that whoa, story whoa, really quickly? Whoa. absolutely i must say yeah. don't you gotta say that so I'm, I'm a, Are you, sure you want to say this on a podcast? This I absolutely do. Jobs. I absolutely okay. do. Uh, because my ignorance will absolutely clear me of any charges. I'm a Southern Baptist child working in Ruby Tuesdays, never had a sip of alcohol in my life. My buddy who will remain nameless was behind the bar for his first time ever. I happened to be serving a table, uh, the people of color that don't look like me. And as I'm leaving the kitchen to go greet this table, my buddy behind the bar is so slammed at a Ruby Tuesdays bar that he says, no more frozen drinks, no more. Because they clearly take five seconds more than a regular drink to make. If I offended any bartenders, I apologize. I walk out to the table and I say, how's everybody doing? You know, obviously great rapport. I'm a phenomenal person. And they look up at me and they say, we want the five Ruby relaxers or whatever they were called. Huge, huge, like fishbowl frozen drinks. And I say, guys, being the honest Southern Baptist Christian that I am, I go, guys, I was just told, unfortunately, by a team member, we can't do any more frozen drinks. Obviously, he said it out of frustration. Not a fact. Not a fact. Mm. But when I saw it, so I said, can I get you guys anything else? And they go, oh, well, that's weird. But OK, whatever. And they order a different uh, beverage. And as I'm writing those down, a full tray of frozen drinks passes by me. They watch that those drinks go to a table that didn't look like wise. them. Yeah. Yes. They look up at me and they say, Patrick, we'd like to speak to the manager. This is not your fault, but we'd like to speak to the manager. I go, absolutely. Go back. Manager has the conversation. The next day I come into work. Hey, Patrick, let's have a little chat real quick. Let's have a little chat. Uh, or maybe the next few days or whatever. I go sit down. I'm like, what's up? Am I getting a raise? No. Um, we're being sued. Uh, we're being taken to court uh, uh, for racist actions. We always serve frozen drinks. Do you understand? I said, yes, I fully understand. And that's how I closed down, you know, probably all the entire Ruby Tuesdays uh, franchise. Amen. Whoa. Amen. So finally, then they're like, okay, now it's cheaper to close. We're going to close now. It's over. <laughs> so that was my, so oh. l learned a lot of lessons there. Um, one I, also, of the I, I have a story that's kind of similar. Okay. I don't know if I've ever told this publicly. Uh, Guys, exclusive, um, a not Applebee's exclusive on Create Post Repeat. Go for it. 
Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> I think I this this is one of those that happened four years ago that I think about at least once a week and like yes. it makes my stomach hurt because I, I said an accidental thing. I understand. I'm self-aware. I know we're two white men talking about this. Yes. I, this is pure regret that I'm yes. saying this. It was All an accident. Caveats. It was caveats. an accident. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're in a Uber in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It where is my parents honeymooned. Where my parents honeymooned. Great spot. That That's where we're going to a ghost tour of your parents' marriage. That's, oh, that's, that's that is so true. And you didn't even know it. That's so true. Are they divorced uh, or dead? Absolutely. OK, Th- yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the ghost of their their love. OK, oh, their love wait. is dead. Go for it. Go for it. Was sorry, that the first you. make you laugh hard enough to knock over the light? Yes, dude. Like I said, you're dude, one of my favorite comedians. Achievement unlocked. Achievement unlocked, baby. Uh, Let's keep going. OK, so yeah, Chattanooga, uh, full Uber, six of us, me, my girlfriend at the time, my friends, uh, TR, his girlfriend at the time, my friend Robbie and his wife, Sarah. So I'm in the front seat, you know, full Uber, like van beside us. Um, driver is a black man, uh, very friendly, very nice. He and he's like, hey, do you want to play trivia? And like kind of cash cab vibes. We're like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. It was coming home from a, a Third Eye Blind concert. Um, and so I'm in the front. So I'm like the team captain. So everyone can talk. But once I say the answer, like that's what we're locking in. Right. So. The question was like, what is the tallest uh, waterfall in the Western Hemisphere? I might be getting this wrong, but it's something like that. We talked about like, where's is Victoria Falls? Where is it? Is it Niagara? Where is it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and we think it's Niagara, but someone else is throwing out something. So I look back. I can't say the answer because if I say an answer, it's locked in. And so we're talking about Niagara. I look back at everyone again, talking about Niagara Falls, and I say, should I say it? Should I say the N word? And I didn't get it at the time. And I look back and my friend TR, he goes, no. <laughs> and then they start cry laughing and I am red, the reddest I've ever been. And I'm looking at the guy. I'm like, I'm in Niagara Falls. Final answer. I'm in Niagara Falls. That's what I meant by N word. It was Niagara <laughs> Falls. I'm so sorry. And he was, I don't know if he fully understood what was going on because it happened. And we're like talking and yelling over each other. Uh, I wanted to die for sure. And I think, I think it was the right answer. And also but- like, also over the years, not to get, not to get too deep or anything, but like, you know, you said, you said at the very beginning of this, that you're uh, pretty progressive. Um, me growing up where I grew up now living in New York city, uh, still being a pastor at a church, I find myself being one very often, one of the most liberal people in the room brag. Nice so, dude. And, and yeah, dude. Right Beta now. Cuck. Beta <laughs> cuck live. Come on. What's up? So, so when those moments happen, cause they inevitably do, you're like, there is this part of you that goes everything I've tried. And yet I still just fail in this dumb scenario. Everything I've tried to learn or work on, you know what I mean? Where you're just like, I screwed this up. I screwed this up. I'll never. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, the shame. Here comes the shame. Yeah, I, I was doing so good. Yeah. I was doing so good. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, so pretty big, uh, pretty big brag there on the, uh, liberalness of, uh, my life. Let's move on. Uh, another yeah, rapid quick... fire. All you asked was Applebee's and we, <laughs> we did all that. That's rapid fire. Cool. Awesome. Well, listen, man, I just like, before we get out of here, because I really want to respect your time. I'm, I'm loving talking to you. Um, I know we've talked about some of the things you're working on, but what do you want people to know about, uh, where, where do you want people to follow you, like your stuff, see your stuff, see your work? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I'm at Aaron Tuning everywhere. Uh, probably the real, like, actual me stuff is on my Instagram. Like, I'm on yeah. my Instagram story. There's always something on there. Mm-hmm. Um, not a big overshare, but that's kind of, I guess, probably how you get to know me. Now that we, we stopped our podcast, we're going to be doing a St. Andre podcast. So right now, there's not really a podcast to tune into. Um, but then St. Andre Golf. That is, yeah, ST Andre Golf um, everywhere. We're posting a, a bunch that my favorite comments are like, I don't golf, but I like these videos. Like they're trying to, oh, yeah. the an, annoying thing in golf is grow the game, but we're trying to a little bit like just trying to make it accessible. We're talking to weekend golfers that don't take it seriously that yeah. don't spend thousands of dollars on, you know, gear and everything. So yeah, I think uh, there's, there's a joke in there for everybody. If, if you want to check it out, we're having a blast completely agree and i um i i want to disagree with something you've said even though i asked you to share your personal feelings you said instagram you don't overshare there's actually two things you overshare on instagram mm. do you do you want karaoke? to know what they are? is it karaoke well it deals with karaoke uh it is the okay. song uh click click boom 
Yep. Which brings me to life. No pun intended. Amy Lee. She <laughs> donated. Up, dude. She she donated her piano to my church. Uh, really? Write it down. Yeah, I went to her apartment to pick it up with my friend. Were you all doing bad financially? Were you going under? No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, the second thing you over you did it. You did it. The th second thing you overshare is um, uh, I, oh, I can't even think of the song title. But um, I got to do Hail Payman. Oh, let's uh, go, girls. Shania Twain. I, which yes. When you when you and um, we can't move on. We can't move on. What is the song? No, don't no, don't look it okay. up. Don't look it up. You can't. Uh, not that don't impress me much. Oh man, I feel like a woman. Man, I feel like a woman. Thank you. God. Yeah. And uh, when you when you drunk ordered your Amazon uh, microphone and sang that deadpan uh, mm -hmm. into your phone, um, I I'm pretty sure I rededicated my life to Christ at that very moment. It was just nice. Like, That's what it was about. <laughs> it That's was what it was like, about. So good. Now, okay. It was such a treat uh, having you on today. I just want everybody to go follow your stuff, go watch your stuff. You are one of the people that consistently makes me laugh. I look forward to talking so much uh, trash to you throughout the MLB season as the Braves assuredly defeat the Mets in what can only be the saddest evenings of my life throughout the year. Thanks for so much sure. for joining us on the podcast. Um, and uh, I hope to do it again one day. Yeah, it was a good time. Thanks for having me. Steve Cohen has all the money in the world, but he can't buy winning a division, a division title. Brutal. Uh, yeah, on, thanks for having again. me. It was a good do time. It, no, do it again, but do it right. I'm going to pretend like it's the first time. Oh, for a clip? Hold on, hold on, hold on. See you, Aaron. Uh, see you. Thanks a ton for having me. Steve Cohen has all the money in the world, but he can't buy a division title. Get wrecked. Uh, flushing, flush the Mets down the toilet, you poverty franchise. I'll see you later. Oh, man. Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> see you, dude. I absolutely loved this conversation with Aaron, and everything we talked about can be found down below, linked in the description. But don't forget, before you go, you probably should watch this video.